everyone, myself Neha Shah from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology from the Department of Electronics and Communication, Engineering. Today I am going to explain you LPI system analysis from linear constant coefficient difference equations using the transform from the subject of signal and system from the fourth unit which one is Z transform. So, this topic can be well explained by some example. So, starting with the first example, an LTI system is described by the difference equation y of n minus 3 y of n minus 1 minus 4 y of n minus 2 is equals to x of n plus 2 x of n minus 1. Specify the ROC of x of z and determine h of n. So, you had given the difference equation in the form of y of n and x of n. From that, you have to find out h of z as well as h of n. For the following conditions, the system is stable, the system is closer. It means from that, we have to find out whether the given system is stable or not, as well as whether the given system is crucial or non crucial So, to solve this example, this kind of examples can be solved as this difference equation is given to you. So, the first step is you have to find out its Z transform. Then, you have to apply time shifting property of it. Then, you have to simplify it and you have to find out Y of Z upon X of Z. It will be considered as H of Z. Why? Because output upon input, it will give you the system transfer function. Right? So, output is Y. Input is x, so y by x will give you the system impulse response, which one is h of z. And if you will convert h of z in the form of h of n by taking inverse z transform, then from that you can find out whether the given system is stable or not, as well as whether the given system is partial or not. So, starting solving this example, first of all, we, we will write this term as y of n minus 3 y of n minus 1 minus 4 y of n minus 2 is equals to x of n plus 2 x of n minus 1. Now, as I have told you that this kind of difference equation are given to you, then you have to first of all take the transform of this as well as you have to apply the time shifting property, right? So, if we are taking that transform of this on both the sides, and also we will applying the time shifting property. So, this term will convert in the form of y of z minus 3 z inverse y of z minus 4 z is to minus 2 y of z equals to x of z plus 2 z inverse x of z. Here we have applied the time shifting property as x of n minus k z transform as z is to minus k x of z as well as y of n minus k z transform is z is to minus k y of z. So, the equation will be like this y of z in bracket 1 minus 3 z inverse minus 4 z is to minus 2 is equals to x of z into 1 plus 2 z in. Now, if we are finding the value of y of z upon x of z, so x of z goes over there, it means y by x equals to 1 plus 2z inverse and this term goes over here. So, the term will be 1 plus 2z inverse divided by 1 minus 3z inverse minus 4 z is to minus 2. Now, as you know that y by x equals to h of z, so this value will be for h of z. And we will convert this z inverse part in the form of z. So, the term will be like this h of z equals to z into z plus 2 divided by z square minus 3 z minus 4. Now, we have to find out inverse z transform of this h of z. So, this kind of examples will be solved by using partial fraction expansion method of the inverse z transform. Okay. So, for that, first of all, we have to find out h of z divided by z. So, this z goes over there. So, the term will be h of z divided by z equals to z plus 2 divided by z square minus 3z minus 4. Now, the next step is we have to find out poles from the denominator. So, if we want to find out poles from the denominator, so for that we have to factorize in the denominator as z square minus 3z minus 4. You can see that the value of a equals to 1, b equals to minus 3 and c equals to minus 4. So, if we 
putting this values in the equation of P1, P2 means pole 1, pole 2. So, the equation is minus V plus or minus under root V square minus 4 AC divided by 2A. If you apply the values of A, B and C from this in this equation and after that, if we will solving this term, then it will give you the pole position as 3 plus or minus under root 9 plus 16 divided by 2. Now, 16 plus 9 means 25, under root 25 means 5, 3 plus or minus 5. So, there will be 2 root, the first one is 4 and the second one is minus 1 because 3 plus 5 means 8 divided by 2. So, the first 4 is 4. And 3 minus 5 means minus 2 divided by 2 means the second pole will be minus 1. So, this way we can find out two poles. Now, we will put in this values of pole in the equation of the h of z divided by z. So, the equation will be like this. h of z divided by z equals to z plus 2 divided by z minus 4 into z plus 1. Now, if you want to solve this term, to find out inverse that transform using partial fraction expansion method. So, for that, we will taking A upon first factor plus B upon second factor, right? So, for that, we will converting this equation in the form of A upon Z minus 4 plus B upon Z plus 1. Now, we have to find out the value of A and B. And after that, we have to put the values of A and B in this equation to find out final answer of H of N. So, for that, if we are finding the value of A, the value of A equals to Z plus 2 divided by Z plus 1. Because we are removing this term Z minus 4 part because A divided by Z part, right? So, we are removing that part and we are taking the pole position as Z minus 4. It means for Z equals to 4. So, in this equation, if we are taking the value of Z equals to 4, so after solving this, 4 plus 2 divided by 4 plus 1. So, the answer of A equals to 6 by 5. Similarly, when finding the value of B, so how in finding the value of B? In this equation, if you want to find out the value of B, so in the above equation, we will remove this term as Z plus 1. Okay, so the term will be like this, Z plus 2 divided by Z minus 4. In this, we will taking the value of Z equals to minus 1. So, if we are taking the value of B, the value of B equals to Z plus 2 divided by Z minus 4 and for that we will taking the value of Z equals to minus 1. Now, if we are putting the value of Z equals to minus 1 in this equation, so the term of B equals to minus 1 plus 2 divided by minus 1 minus 4. So, the final answer is minus 1 plus 2 means 1 divided by minus 1 minus 4 means minus 5. So, overall answer will be minus 1 by 5. Now, we are putting this values of A and B in the equation of H of Z divided by Z. So, the equation will be like this. H of Z divided by Z equals to 6 by 5 upon Z minus 4 minus 1 by 5 divided by Z plus 1. Now, we will multiply this z on the right side part. So, the next term is h of z equals to 6 by 5 into z upon z minus 4 minus 1 by 5 in as it is z upon z plus 1. Why we have multiplied with z? Because we have to find out inverse z transform of h of z, right? And up to this equation, the term will be in the form of h of z divided by z. So, we have to find out the value of h of z only. So, we have to multiply by z on the both the side. So, the final answer will be like this. Now, we have to take the inverse z transform of this and you have to recall the standard signal z transform like z upon z minus a. Its z transform is for a raised to n u of n sequence, right? So, we will apply this rule over here. So, if we are finding a raised to n u of n z transform its value will be z upon z minus a. So, if we are applying this rule over here, so we can find out its z transform as h of z will convert in the form of h of n equals to 6 by 5 constant will be as it is. Now, compare the term z upon z minus 4 with z upon z minus a. So, the value of a equals to 4, right? So, the term will be like this a raised to n u of n. So, the value of a equals to 4. So, the term will be 4 raised to n u of n minus 1 by 5 will be as it is. And this term 
if we are finding the value of a, so this plus 1 will convert in the form of minus minus 1. So, it will convert in the form of z minus a pi, right? So, the value of a equals to minus 1. So, the term will be minus 1 raised to n u of n. So, this one is the final answer of h of n. So, up to this, we have solved the difference equation which one is in the form of y of n and x of n. So, it will solve by taking z transform, then we have finding the value of y of z divided by x of z. So, it will consider it the h of z. From that, we have find the value of h of z divided by z. To find out inverse z transform of h of z using partial fraction expansion method. And we have find the inverse z transform of h of z in the form of h of n. Now, we have to find out whether the given system is stable or not as well as whether the given system is causal or non causal So, for that we are taking the combined ROC is mode Z is greater than 4 from the final answer of the Z transform. Because there are two factors, the first factor is 4 and the second factor is minus 1. So, if we are drawing the two circles, the one will be inner side from the 4. So, the final combined ROC will be considered as mode Z is greater than 4, right? Now, if I am drawing the ROC, you can see on the horizontal axis, we have drawn the real part of Z and on the vertical axis, we have drawn the imaginary part of Z. In this, we are drawing the circle of radius of 4. So, one circle will take in with a radius of 4 and the ROC is more Z is greater than 4, right? So, it will drawn like this, more Z is greater than 4, it means it will be outside of the 4th circle and the inner circle is considered as the unit circle 1. Now, we have to check whether the given system is stable or not as well as causal or not, right? From this graph of ROC, you can see that ROC is the exterior part of any circle. So, as exterior part is considered as the ROC, so you can see that the system is causal. Now, we have to check whether the given system is stable or not. So, for that, we have to check the position of the pole. Now, if we will see the position of the pole, the first pole will be located at P1 equals to 4 and the second pole will be located on the minus 1. So, P2 equals to minus 1. Now, from the criteria of the stability, the value of pole position for the stable system will be inside the unit circle. But you can see that the position of the first pole is outside the unit circle means on 4. So, we can say that this system is unstable system. If the position of pole will be inside the unit circle, then it will consider as the stable system. And if the pole position will be located on the unit circle, then it will consider as the marginally stable system. So, this way any difference equations are given to you, then you can find its impulse response in the form of Z domain as well as in the form of H of N, means in the form of sequence. And from that you can find out whether the given system is quotient or not, as well as stable or not. From the next session, I will start the new unit which one is based on Fourier series as well as Fourier transform. Thank you so much.